So, Zero, you mm. hate this movie. Well, I wouldn't say I hate it. <laughs> I would say that I appreciated what it was trying to say, and I thought the overall message wasn't bad, but I did not care for the pacing or overall, like, kind of writing of the movie. You despise this movie <laughs> you you uh, really that hurts me uh, to hear that because i thought it was guy it's funny it's funny because i really like this movie a lot <laughs> I, I and i you know what i saw it for the first time not that long ago mm. and i saw it it was part of like um godzilla's i think whatever anniversary had maybe 60th probably yeah. um and they were they did a, a 4K restoration of the first Godzilla and um, Shin Godzilla. And I watched Shin Godzilla first because um, I'm on my I was on my Evangelion kick, mm -hmm. so I, I put the two together and I was like, oh, I want more of that. Um, and I loved it in the theater. I thought it was really clever. I thought it was really funny. And like I don't know, I like the idea that like they made Godzilla like almost like a satire, or totally a satire, <laughs> right? Like it was like so ridiculous the like bureaucracy going on, and it was very clear the like it was very clear the parallel between um, uh, Godzilla and the power plant. Like mm. I think that was pretty obvious, but I yeah. think that was like a smart like modern way of of bringing Godzilla to like, I guess like modernizing Godzilla because um, the original Godzilla is sort of like an allegory for uh, a nuclear bomb. Yeah. I think a lot of that worked. I think, uh, I don't know, one of the, like right after, I think the first uh, rampage where he like kind of comes onto shore and mutates like then where, like, like wiggles through the city. Yeah. You've got like, there's that scene with the prime minister and then like, I don't know. They're going to go survey the disaster. And he's like, ready my suit. <laughs> and they pull up the yeah. blue suit. That was funny. I thought that was funny. <laughs> there were some good moments. I, I just like that. Like everyone was like constantly repeating themselves, you know, like, mm. they, like there were so many levels to like getting something done. And I think in, in one part in the beginning, don't they like go to one office and move to the other office and move back? Yeah. To they office? literally do that like <laughs> multiple times in the beginning of the movie. And I, and like... I, 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 so rewatching it, I, I could see why people would think that's boring or like, I don't understand what's going on. Or, you know, like, I, I think this is like, cause I, well, okay. How's your, how's your Godzilla? Like, like how's your Godzilla knowledge? Like, do you um, care about Godzilla? Because I think we both don't. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, <laughs> I definitely don't care about Godzilla. I'm not a big fan of like monster movies in general, but like, I've never really watched any of the Japanese films until like literally like 10 minutes ago I finished the first movie uh but other than that like I've seen I've seen like the American movies uh but yeah. I don't remember much of anything other than like the 90s movie of uh that's a lot of fish <laughs> <That's about it. laughs> the, Ma the Matthew Broderick yeah. one right <laughs> yeah and you see um I also like I watch I think that was my first Godzilla movie mm -hmm. was watching that like Matthew Broderick one um and i remember thinking it was cool but i was also like six so, <laughs> yeah. so forgive me if that if that sounds bad but um i i also like did it when i watched godzilla in the theater the 4k restoration was my first time watching the original godzilla mm -hmm. and i i hadn't watched any other godzillas aside from the american one so we were in the same boat in that regard but i do appreciate uh, the tokatsu like japanese films and like the guy in the rubber suit type of thing and I remember thinking the effects in the new movie were um, like kind of bad. Yeah, they're they're like they're very <laughs> cheap. They look good for the money they put into it, but like some of the fire effects and explosions look a little cheap, and some yeah. of the like color grading's a little off. And I overall, think I, it looks good enough, but that's about it. <laughs> I think some of the shots of I think Godzilla works, and I think they probably did that. Um, I, I upon rewatch, I was kind of like, oh, this like Godzilla's so stiff. And I was like, oh, that must be like a homage to the like rubber suit figure yeah, Godzilla, you know, like that make him so stiff. And I, I really thought it was creepy that he like didn't blink. Like he just like had full, <laughs> he had full eye on display. It was always really creepy. Yeah, I can't get over but the I, googly eyes, but then watching yeah! the original, it's like, yeah, that's what he looks like, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it's not that far fetched. It's kind of, 
it's kind of uh it's kind of gross in both versions but i did agree that the the destruction of the city especially towards the end of the movie when they did like the train um thing train bombs. <laughs> yeah the train bombs i was like okay like you could see the cg kind of falling apart <laughs> and i think that's kind of true of a lot of japanese movies i feel like yeah. the cg and a lot of them are kind of like lesser quality they still kind of look like ps2 games yeah they're or definitely, ps3 like, games they're really. like above, <laughs> they're above those indian films but like just barely kind of like yeah right a little heavy cg which is another movie to check out one day but for now we're godzilla <laughs> we're in godzilla town <laughs> um but yeah uh i you know the bureaucracy yes. of it <laughs> uh crazy <laughs> it's definitely crazy i think for me like part of it didn't work because i feel like i feel like i've seen it done better in the akira kurosawa film uh ikiru where it's it deals very much with that bureaucracy in the very beginning of the film just these women trying to get like a this sewage spill kind of cleaned up and turned into like a safe place for their kids to play which is the main plot of the movie but they're just like being shuffled from office to office and everybody's like not my problem you need you know sewer control or no that's works department or this and they just keep going and going and going and i don't know i, I like the way that movie goes about that um which so you're you're comparing godzilla to uh akira kurosawa in uh, terms <laughs> of what it's trying to say about bureaucracy yes i get it i get it but you know what you know what i wouldn't fault see i i don't fault it too much because like I think that the the bureaucracy element of it is like clear and like it's obviously pointing at the failings of the Japanese government yes. in in recent like I think uh the power plant uh thing happened in 2011. Yeah. And uh this is 2016. So it was very recent. Um I think it just does what it's supposed to. I don't think it's like a big uh, I I you know like the whole movie I guess isn't about that, but like I guess I guess like I guess I know what you're coming from. I I don't I don't fault it because it's like you know there is a giant monster. Like yeah. it's part of the part of the charm is that this is Godzilla and you're <laughs> dealing with uh, um, clumsy bureaucracy. Yeah, I have no idea what goes on in Akira, but I'm I'm um, there's no Godzilla. I'm sure there's no <laughs> giant monster. No, I think I mean for me it's like you've got the bureaucracy element, but I think what that movie does really well is it's very much a character piece, which is what I feel like Shin Godzilla is missing is like a character element that kind of I don't know holds me into the like makes me give a shit about what's happening. I feel like a lot of characters are just the talking heads that spout the exposition. I will agree. I will. I will. Uh, let me falter a little bit. Yes, I agree with that. I because I um I the only I I like don't know the main character's name. <laughs> I had to look it up afterwards. Yeah, it's like Yaguchi uh, or something. Uh, yeah, and I, I only I only remember it because it's Operation Yaguchi in the beginning. So, uh, <laughs> and it's funny. His his first name is Rando. Like he might yeah. be Rando. <laughs> um, the only character I really remember is the um, U.S. American contact, yeah. the Japanese girl. Um, but I right, did, no, I did not realize is... she was supposed to be American until I was looking at the trivia and I was like, wait, w wait, what? <laughs> yeah, she's like, she's like something to the president, and like, yeah, her, her, I mean, her English is pretty good for a Japanese person. It's but it's like, no, you're not, you're not. I think um, it was the first anybody. scene. It, it sounded like she was trying to do like an American accent. It was just, it was not working. <laughs> Hold on, that's that's the fun. That's so crazy. The um, I just got out of a party. I need to. Like, where's the Zara? I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there there really isn't that uh that many characters to hold on to. Um, but maybe again, I, you know what? I don't want to defend it too much. Like, uh, maybe that doesn't matter. But like, you know, you're here for Godzilla. Yeah. You that's, know, it, it, that's one of those things where I I don't know, like I. Uh, I wish there was a little bit more Godzilla and a little bit less of the bureaucracy because like, yeah. a lot of it is pretty good. But I, I feel like there's a lot of repeated information that doesn't work for me personally. But uh, I don't know. As far as Godzilla, like when he does show up, one of the cool parts is shooting the laser beams. But mostly he kind of just stands there while they're shooting him and he just like doesn't give a fuck, which I guess might kind of be the point. But it just seems weird that he's just he's like getting shot in the face and he's just like, whatever. yeah, <laughs> well, he's so I mean, cause like when they finally attack him, they've waited too long. So he's like his armor, like his skin is fully armored. He doesn't feel any attack. They kind of missed their opportunity to do any damage to him when um, 
when he was like red like <laughs> remember like the old, they didn't shoot because there were like old people in the area and yeah, like, oh, it was right. like an old man <laughs> across the street it's like we can't fire <laughs> it was very honorable to, uh, of the prime minister but also come on <laughs> yeah, they went on to destroy like 30 buildings after that <laughs> exactly and i mean that's also an, an like a overarching theme is that like man is uh worse than god so i think they say that line and one at one part of the movie that man is is war a, a bigger threat mm, than yeah. godzilla and it's funny uh my girlfriend and walked in when i was watching it um and she uh she she commented she was like oh you know um they're not reacting as like if i saw a giant monster i'd be like you know i wouldn't even look back but they were like kind of like more in awe of what was going on <laughs> God, and but, Zilla. <laughs> oh, right right but when um when uh when the Americans were at a, when they heard America was coming to attack, they were like flooding the underground. Like they were like, "Oh my god, we got to get out of here!" <laughs> <laughs> America's dropping bombs to stop this thing. We got to get clear. <laughs> so I did like that, and I yeah, uh, man was man was their own uh, yeah, man was the uh, problem for most of it. But I I really liked that. I know like Godzilla wasn't really Godzilla until like halfway through the movie. Yeah, I did mm-hmm. like that it kind of like evolved from like this weird um like giant amoeba. I don't I know, well, not an amoeba, but like this giant like thing, and it kind of like uh, evolved throughout. I really liked that, and I really liked when they uh, dropped the nuke or the bomb on him, and he uh, sent off the atomic breath. Oh yeah, that that was cool. That was great. Yeah, I did like that. that the um the sound effects are so good like i like i said i don't know godzilla that well but that like you know that like ringing when he shoots the uh his his like atomic breath i was like oh i know that and that 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 was cool yeah it's pretty good uh and it was it was um it happens almost like 45 minutes into the movie which might be too long for some but yeah i i felt that it was tension built enough and then they killed the prime minister which i thought was pretty funny (laughs) (laughs) just wiped them out in one fell swoop (laughs) yeah i like that middle section where they're kind of attacking him and the lasers and then like fucking just burning the whole city and then shooting the beam uh and i don't know i just felt like for me i think it wasn't really to like I think around like the last half hour when I really got into what was happening because everybody was actually coming together and doing something. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Instead of just sitting in a boardroom and talking about what we should do. Well, it's crazy how they had to wait for everyone to die for that to happen. Yeah, basically. (laughs) They're basically just waiting for the whole government to get wiped out so they could then just get rid of the red tape, I guess. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) And but and it's weird that the last they did need that one bit of red tape though to uh i didn't understand i think that the, like the like prime minister bought them time because he like begged the french to like delay their attack or something yeah there was uh one guy uh i think it was one of the the guys working with the main character yaguchi where it was like uh he's got like a a backdoor contact with the french embassy or something yeah uh, but that's I, kind of one of the issues i had is a lot of the things they they like mentioned they know something or can do something but then they just do it all off screen and then cut back to whatever's happening. Yeah, but that I feel like that's necessary. If you would, like, there's only so much boardroom talking <laughs> yeah. that you can take, and this Tim Godzilla has a lot of boardroom talking. Yep, it's almost like like a uh, like um what are shows like a uh, Veep or um. What's the fucking show? The West Wing. Oh, <laughs> Where yeah, it's just them the talking and walking. Yeah, they just walk and talk. <laughs> yeah, and it felt like that. And I, I just, I mean, I felt like it was funny enough and like interesting enough. But I do, I do understand that it was mostly talking for the first thirty minutes. And like, hmm, uh, what should we do about that? I don't know. You know? <laughs> yeah, I think it, it needs one of those. I don't know, just a little bit more balancing because like. I love Ghost in the Shell. It's got bureaucracy. It definitely has boardrooms and talking <laughs> and backroom deals, but it mixes it into people doing backflips and shooting each other and robots and stuff. So what you're saying this movie missed, this is like we were missing too many. Like we need more backflips. Uh, maybe. <laughs> okay, watching Gojira, I kind of, I just loved how in that movie, Godzilla is just like, seems to be just an asshole. He just kind of shows up and just starts breaking <laughs> shit on purpose. He doesn't seem to have any goal other than to like knock buildings over, rip up bridges. <laughs> you know, I, I, I didn't like the original Godzilla. And it's, and I, and maybe it's because I liked Shin Godzilla hmm. because at least the characters as maybe 
uh lacking in character as i as we <laughs> you know we might think i still felt they were more compelling than the shitty love story yeah, between like the scientist and the evil scientist with like an eye patch or <laughs> yeah. something yeah i didn't think the love story worked and for what i was reading apparently Shin actually was supposed to have like a family drama and a romance like the original but ano cut that out which I don't think is a bad thing. Cause... I think that's a good thing. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I didn't need any of that in the original film. But I do I do think the original was better about, like, showing the actual destruction and how it affected people. Like, you see people dying. You see injured people. Like, well, Shin kind see, of... There were plenty of uh, injured people in leveled neighborhoods. <laughs> they, they cut the whole neighborhoods on fire. So I don't know how you, how you could think that. Well, I think for me, it's like they show all this destruction, but then it's like one of the, I think it's after the first attack, then they come back to like the day after, and it's just like shots of people jogging and going to work. And like, you don't really see the hospitals <laughs> overflowing or the but, injured people, the suffering. But, but you know what? I do... I do kind of like that. <laughs> I, I, because, you know, when there's a national tragedy, um, yeah, half of the country, like, you know, I, if there was a real national tragedy, there are people who are unaffected and go about their day. And if, like, the people of Tokyo are getting bodied by a giant monster, I'm sure the other part of Japan are, like, reading this on newspaper, like, wow, that's crazy. And then, like, <laughs> doing their 5k so like i i you know makes I sense. think that i think that was like that was a cool juxtaposition um also like uh they were still kind of considering godzilla a a small threat at that point right yeah, yeah i think uh i don't know they were projecting like the destruction around that time or something but that they was, still like, didn't think didn't yeah. they still didn't think he could like even stand on his legs yeah that was that was kind of like around that point i think yeah He's just too big. <laughs> He's just too big. He got well, too, that, too that much did, head. <laughs> that was one of the things that it's kind of funny, but also kind of annoyed me where there just seemed to be this repeated theme of somebody says, it's this thing. Some other guy says, that's impossible. You're crazy. And then that thing <laughs> happens. And they're like, my God, he was right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that did happen two times. I, I, I know that um, in the press conference that happened. And I know like. When the woman suggested that uh, he was uh, radioactive, nuclear, yeah, like <laughs> nuclear fission was that play. The guy was like, "What? That's impossible!" And then started <laughs> screaming. And there's that. There's a little bit of that Japanese overacting. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, 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 when I say that, I don't. I mean, there's overacting and everything, but it's like <laughs> that kind of like. Wah! I don't know. I feel like that's very like a Japanese like reaction when the guy loses his shit, yeah. um, discovering it's radioactive. <laughs> Um, but the, you know what? Speaking of, you know, the, that crew was a, at least fun. Even again, if like the character, like I, I felt like I liked watching them on screen to like the crack team, you know, of like nerds and geeks and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I do kind of like them in a way. I just wish they had like more personality because they kind of have their own like personalities kind of but it's so it's so little you get so little of it yeah they kind of like immediately agreed uh, there wasn't even any like real tension everyone was just like on board with solving which i guess is kind of like in a perfect world you would want that right yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, in a, you know if a, if a giant uh, monster was attacking i would want everyone to be like hey let's get to work done instead of like huh i don't know i have pride <laughs> i have dignity but i did like how they knocked out Godzilla. It wasn't like very cool, but it was kind of cool. The like, <laughs> well, like they just cool the power plant. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, I, I do... and it was very clear. It was very clear what they were doing. You know, like you know, like like uh, cooling a power plant. Godzilla's a power plant. We have to live with this power plant now. Yeah, I definitely got the symbolism. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I kind of hit you over the head with it. <laughs> Which I mean, I do, I do like the scene of them injecting the coagulant and kind of like everybody watching from afar, and you, you do, I don't know, seeing people actually doing things, and then they got the whole plan to knock him over, and then more train bombs to knock him over again. And, Love train bombs. Director, <laughs> director loves trains. By the way. It's like, trains. When you talk about uh, uh, Ano's uh, directing motifs. There are a lot of trains in everything he does. Yeah, definitely uh, getting that sense. <laughs> from yeah, and it's interesting from anime to live action because he's done a lot of live action stuff and he doesn't. He's done a good amount of anime too. Um, a lot of trains, a lot of trains, and a lot of that he likes to use that um, 
the stop sound. Oh, yeah. The like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that and wires. Mm, He's like yeah. all about that. I'm telling you, I know, and I know you hate. I know you hate him. This is another thing. <laughs> this is the reason why we chose this movie was because I like Evangelion. You hate Evangelion. <laughs> I like Shin Godzilla. You hate Shin Godzilla. <laughs> and so, like, you really just have a problem with this the way this guy works. I, I think I, I have an issue with his writing, uh, his directing, because I think as a visual director, he has some of the most stunning visuals like i think he's an amazing artist i i read some like somebody was talking about like uh neon genesis and talking about the animation being dated and i was like what the fuck are you talking about oh yeah <laughs> dude the gynax, gynax that studio which he founded yeah gynax uh evangelion if, if anything the animation still holds up today like almost 30 years later yeah i think it looks really good i also when i was looking through some of his credits i found out uh like he's done like some key animation work on some other random animes but one of which was uh an episode of a cr the cream lemon series which is a very weird hentai series <laughs> but there's a specific episode i really like called pop chaser it's like this sci-fi kind of punk like i don't know apocalyptic thing which is really cool lots of amazing explosions but apparently he did like the key animation on that specific episode which i found interesting <laughs> so I, there's definitely things he's done that i like just not when he writes things <laughs> he's also i think he was also a key animator in uh he was for a uh, for um a ghibli movie one of the first ghibli uh, it was movies. uh i think nausicaa uh, yes and he also worked on uh what was it uh wings of oniamis which i really like that movie yeah yeah i uh well you know what um like what's your problem with his writing uh i don't know i think and when it comes to shin godzilla and the uh neon genesis I think yeah both... i know you want to i know you want to shit on neon genesis <laughs> so like, bad i think they but... both have the same <laughs> issue where it's like lots of repeated information where people just kind of say the same things over and over again and the scenes just kind of drag on for me i think <laughs> Do you find that exposition dumping? Because I'm not saying you're totally <laughs> wrong, because there is a lot of exposition dumping in this, a lot of like, and in like, in Neon Genesis, there's a lot of sci-fi mumbo jumbo that gets spouted, and you're like, what is this mean? This doesn't make any sense. There's, this isn't rooted in reality. I, they're just saying words to me. <laughs> um, do you think that that, like, I mean, that's kind of like, I feel like that's kind of like a sci-fi thing. And I feel like even if it's an exposition dump, like maybe it's a necessary exposition dump. I don't really know if there's any other way to get relay that information without telling me. You know what I mean? Like, mm. like I, you guys do like show and tell, but like a, a movie like Godzilla, you know, how are you going to show me that? Uh, you know, that's a good question. And like, how would you do it in Godzilla uh, where it would make some sense? Like, you I'm know not, what I mean? Yeah, I'm not exactly Sure, because I haven't really stopped and really thought about it, but <laughs> but I I do I don't know. It's one of those things where there goes blind criticism. <laughs> well, it's kind of like I mean I've definitely thought about Neon Genesis a little too much, but uh... see, it's like an earworm. Right? Uh, yeah, like a brainworm. It gets into you like even if you hate it, you're still kind of like fuck. Like <laughs> I just think um, I don't know. Like I'm really drawn to character stories. Um, like, even if the main plot doesn't necessarily work, as long as there's, like, an interesting character and story, then um, I usually really like that. But I, um, I don't know. With Shin Godzilla, I think I don't necessarily mind exposition in general. I just felt like when it comes to Shin Godzilla, it's just it's so exposition heavy. And again, it's lacking that character element for me where it doesn't really take a break in between to kind of like give you a breather and kind of like introduce a more human element that I feel like the film is lacking. And also they talk so fucking fast. It's like whiplash a lot of the times where I'm just like trying to keep up with what's happening. Um, <laughs> but I also, I felt like there's some of the exposition, like that's just completely unneeded. Like every time it cuts to anything, that's like everybody has a name and a title and the location where they are. And like that <laughs> stuff is too much for me. I could cut that out. <laughs> I 
what how am i supposed to know where uh japanese you know what i wonder <laughs> if i wonder if that is still included um in i wonder if that's still included in the non sub like i wonder if jap if you just watch the japanese only would they what's their japanese text i, I think yes from one of the reviews i was looking at like he was talking about it uh he was mentioning the japanese text that was overlaid with english subtitles so i think that's how it was released in japan it still has that text hmm, interesting that must be a choice then yeah i mean it's very anime that's that's very popular in anime now it seems like you just gotta like well, tell everybody who everyone is all the time <laughs> well again you know he does that in all his animes too yeah so uh, he, uh, <laughs> Maybe we'll chalk that up as a motif. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, technically, probably could. Um, totally could. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just trying to think, like, as far as the exposition goes, like, what would I do? I feel like, like, there's some of it that happens that is just repeated information. Um, but I think, like, the beginning of the movie kind of opens in an interesting way. Uh, with like the tunnel collapse and like some of the oh, no, footage stuff yeah and, like, yeah and yeah then it just kind of gets rid of all of that i love how that guy kills himself <laughs> um and he leaves his shoes behind so neat like i was like wow <laughs> yeah, until like i mean i guess it's never really explained like how i guess he got all this research on godzilla and how he got godzilla there and what exactly happened to him i have to assume he somehow lured godzilla and then killed himself maybe i don't well so i i looked this up a little bit because i i was curious as to who that was and this was actually really interesting i pulled this up so the character's name is goro maki mm. right yeah but the picture uh is actually of a real life director named Ka uh, Kahachi Okamoto, who died in 2005. So this was actually an 11 year old. Uh, he had died 11 years prior to Shin Godzilla, mm -hmm. uh, and he was directed um, a, uh, a Japanese comedy called Rainbow Kids um that went on to win a, a couple of japanese academy awards and he was included literally he has no tie to the godzilla series at all he literally was thrown in there because hideki Anno was like yeah i like his stuff <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. But, but the character right so he um 60 years prior, which I think might be, and this is, again, there's no real connection between the original Godzilla and this one, but um, essentially he, uh, the government, like, let his wife die because of radiation poisoning or something, and he was, like, examining this radiation at the bottom of the seafloor, and basically that's what caused Godzilla to rise. Uh -huh. And he, I guess, warned the government. They ignored him, you know. Uh, and he, when he realized uh, what was happening, he left the, his, like, you know, the pamphlet and, like, clues for who, for the Japanese. It was almost like a test for the Japanese government, <laughs> yeah. who, has let, who had let him down uh, by letting his wife die and, I guess, not heeding his warnings on Godzilla. Uh, it was almost like a F you. If anything, he might be... Um, the real like the only antagonist of, mm. of the uh of the movie because he knew what was happening well i guess they wouldn't have believed him but i guess <laughs> killing himself was really the ultimate like i know the answer but i'm taking it with me <laughs> i think you could at least put it online or something <laughs> <laughs> no i'm gonna leave it as a puzzle <laughs> so, so like that was kind of like um he's like the only real bad guy in this film even godzilla uh just a just a just a lost thing yeah godzilla just i mean he was just driven to like the nuclear power i just kind of felt a little bad for him when they started trying to kill him <laughs> i know i know he was it was like he borderline cute at his <laughs> and his, his, his beginning phases uh and then he got a little like oh man this is terrifying <laughs> I do like I like the transformation stuff, especially when he kind of like goes from like starts growing his arms out. And, like, I think <laughs> I think blood. more. Yeah, I think more things need like just to evolve mid uh, <laughs> mid movie. <laughs> the threat is always changing. It, it, you know, um, the Jurassic Park movies. Uh, the newest one is in theaters right now. Um, and I know those those movies are all about like dinosaurs and stuff like that. But I wish more movies would uh would play with that. 
you know like i guess jurassic park does um you know some of those dinosaurs don't look like how they should <laughs> right yeah uh but i don't know i think jurassic park would be cool i don't know i've never not seen the recent one so i don't know if this happens but i feel like jurassic park would be even cooler if the dinosaurs just evolved in front of these guys <laughs> i think that would be really cool <laughs> good work i think mostly they just uh wander around in the middle of fucking i don't know italy or something but i haven't seen it <laughs> Yeah, Godzilla being the ultimate, uh, the perfect organism. I love, oh, can I, I do like that um, if the Japanese government is painted as this, like, bureaucratic uh, failing of a government. Uh, the Americans, I thought, it was really funny that the Americans were literally swooping in because they were like, Godzilla has some unknown resources on him. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> I like that. I, I, I like that little, uh, that little note. It was, it, it, I, I hate to bring this movie up, but it did remind me of that uh, movie, Don't Look Up, oh, where yeah. um, uh, they didn't kill, they didn't destroy the asteroid because of uh, the minerals that they could uh, harvest off of it or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And I hate that movie, by the way. It's not, <laughs> not a good movie. Yeah, my mom was trying to get me to watch it. I know, I know all the parts about it. And I just, I don't, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it, is not, it is. I don't. I'm shocked that it even got like, like I think it got a few Academy Award nominations, and I was like shocked. My God, it was really. It was not good. There weren't really good performances. There weren't really. It, the story wasn't very good. It wasn't very funny. Just, <laughs> Standard just Netflix. Oh, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, maybe that's it. You know, fuck. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really care for their writers either. You, but like, back to Ano's stuff, because you like can't stand his writing. It's too much exposition. For I, I feel like the exposition's pretty heavy. The characters never get developed in a way that I feel is like satisfying <laughs> and he just kind of likes to I don't know he seems to have this focus on these kind of like empty worlds where the world is more so the character and you just don't get that kind of like everyday kind of like real world feel from it like it's almost eerie feeling interesting that you say that because I was reading um, I was reading something about like the, the train thing and he said he really likes to add everyday objects in his stuff to like you know root it in in uh the real world you know yeah. like phones, uh power lines, trains, and stuff like that. So you really feel like wow, this could really happen. Oh, <laughs> uh, and I mean I've never been to Tokyo or I've never been to Japan, so I don't know how like I mean it felt like Japan to me. Yeah, from everything <laughs> I've seen. <laughs> um, but you know, how, what do you think about the soundtrack? Because I um, love some of the songs on that and of course that that does that, that uh decisive battle track which is all it's very tongue-in-cheek because it pops up like four or five times and it is a, it is a popular track from evangelion um <laughs> that pops up and i don't know how often it pops up in other things because um we'll get to uh, there's something in a second because he's also doing like a bunch of other movies mm -hmm. uh he's uh re reviving a bunch of different like older uh japanese stuff but like what did you think about this because it's also the same composer <sighs> I don't know, like, I definitely didn't honestly really notice the soundtrack that much. I mean, it was like, I didn't notice anything, like, bad about it, or it was wrong. It, uh, I mean, it was just kind of, like, there, but I can't really think of anything of note other than, I guess, the second time uh, Godzilla shows up and comes out of the water and they play, like, the original music. <laughs> like, I definitely noticed that. Uh, but the rest of it, I don't know, I didn't, uh... I don't know. Didn't really notice much about it. Interesting, because I really like some of the. I really like the one, um, the the song that plays. I did like the uh, original tune, but I liked the there was there was a theme that played when he shot off his nuclear breath that I really dug. I was like, oh, this is like banging. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then the decisive battle, which I remember in the theater, I like laughed because I was like, oh, wait, I know that song. <laughs> <laughs> and it was funny that it was like placed right on the like, like the most like when things were really getting down and it wasn't anything. It was like people were like pushing chairs around and like handing over folders. I love that. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love I love a song that's like inappropriate for the setup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are usually pretty good. I do kind of vaguely. I definitely remember that scene, less so the music. I was more distracted by the camera angles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a couple of cool shots of like him of Godzilla just like standing in the rubble and stuff like that. Yeah, I definitely like or, that or stuff. Or in the fire. 
I, I, I really like that stuff, and I less liked when uh, when the camera just was shoved in people's faces as close as possible, uh, <laughs> which has happened a few times. <laughs> you know what? I wonder how much of how much of you know because I'm not familiar with. Um, well, I mean, we've seen uh, the original Godzilla, you and I. Yep. Um, but. Oh, Japanese television tend to do that, like super zoom stuff. Right? Yeah, they they definitely do a lot of that stuff. And I wonder uh, if that's still paying homage, not to Godzilla precisely, but like also the um, just the like ge- the genre of like kaiju fighting, tokatsu stuff. Yeah, I mean, I I would have to assume because like in terms of like older japanese cinema that definitely really isn't a thing from what i've seen yeah. of it but uh when it comes to like definitely monster kind of like destroy city type things and all that other stuff like yeah it definitely comes off a lot you get those dramatic like kind of shots even like neon genesis definitely got those close-up face shots <laughs> yeah right <laughs> I, I i wonder how much of that is just straight homage to that like mm. it's a good question i mean it definitely I don't know. I definitely like the movie feels like something he made for sure. Um, <laughs> and I definitely got some sense of of kind of similar themes um, in terms of like the directing. I'm interested to see his other stuff because um, this was just announced a few months ago. Um, that dance with the the Shin Shin Japan Heroes, or I forget what it's called. Oh, uh, hold on. It's Shin Japan Heroes Universe. <laughs> and while it's not while it's not uh, a crossover in in probably uh, uh, terms we understand where that means your your Marvel movie is going to be in my Marvel movie type of thing, <laughs> but they are uh, their merchandise is crossing over. Oh, and of they're course. and they're all connected. Well, merchandise is easier to make, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah. They're all, they're all connected by the fact that this guy is writing and directing all of them. Uh and he's he uh, the remakes of Evangelion have officially capped this mm-hmm. year. Uh last year, late last year. Um but that was going off from 2007 to 2021. And when they finally finally wrapped that Shin Godzilla. It, it, I think in, I think in Japan it's called Shin Evangelion, uh, and there's Shin Godzilla in 2016. And I think then they realized, well, you've got two other movies in the hopper, might as well make this universe around them. <laughs> so the next, uh, what just came out in May was Shin Ultraman, which it wasn't. I I believe it was written by him and not directed by him. Uh, yeah, and I, I think supposedly he plays Ultraman. I'm like, assuming in the suit. <laughs> <laughs> he might actually that that's, i wonder if that's true yeah it's uh, i mean it's got him listed as ultraman in the credits <laughs> so i'm gonna assume he's the guy in the suit well he would know best yes right? i mean from what i've seen <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah apparently he's a huge ultraman uh fan and he he did like some student films of uh where he like played ultraman but there's um there's a manga written by his wife that uh she kind of like makes fun of him and how like borderline nuts he is about yeah that was uh, and stuff yeah i i just remember the part where she was talking about how he doesn't like to take baths <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> oh get it together guy <laughs> just but sleeping he, in the office and not yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe that's why they added that one uh oh the, the guy was like they were like, hey, you, need to, you need to change your shirt. Oh, yeah, He's that like, was what? that was one of the few like actual character moments. I was like, oh, this is kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> and but then they run in there like, oh, Godzilla's back. <laughs> yeah, that old frock. Yeah, he's your new shirt. We had time to launder it. Um, uh, but he's doing he, he just Ultraman just came out. And I don't know if that's coming out in America. I assume it's coming soon. Um, and then Shin Kamen Rider. Yeah. is coming out and i saw the trailer for that and i i saw um uh plenty of trains already <laughs> plenty of, so of like it's, he's, his his stamp is all over that and I, I i'm wondering if uh that's gonna be more like i don't know i mean i feel like he struck gold with Shun godzilla i think it was really cool but i i have even less of a connection with those characters so i'm interested to see um how he modernizes them yeah, it could be interesting because I've I've definitely I know a little bit of Common Rider, but like don't, I've never seen it or watched anything from it really, so I don't know enough about it. <laughs> Who would be 
the who would be the like American equivalent of the of someone who's just remaking all of our shit? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I mean, Hollywood J. J. in general. Abrams and I just... <laughs> Ah, damn, J.J. Abrams. He already ruined Star Trek for me, so I can't. Uh, well, now it's like Alex Kurtzman. Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's... I, I, I have no pull in the Star Trek stuff, but I, I think the new one is pretty good. But uh, J.J. Abrams, I mean, he he's doing the opposite of what uh, this guy's doing, what Otto's doing, because at least uh, Otto's writing and directing him. J.J. Abrams just, like, shows up. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> he doesn't really do anything anymore. Uh, but yeah, he ruined Star Wars, ruined Star Trek, and he's probably gonna ruin a couple other things. So. <laughs> but I wonder, um, like, what like beloved thing from childhood that's like truly like American America's childhood? Not even because like Godzilla, Ultraman, Kamen Rider, and even Evangelion, uh, they're all like took Japan by storm. Yep. Like no, everyone knew what these were in Japan <laughs> at, during their their heyday. Which I think is like, if Godzilla was the fifties, I think Ultraman's the sixties, maybe Common Rider's like seventies, eighties, and then Evangelion's like the nineties. But like they they all in their respective times sort of like influenced and took over Japan for for what it's worth. So like I wonder what would be like the all American remake that would be like the equivalent of that. I maybe That's a good question. Maybe, maybe we've already seen it with like Captain America and stuff. Yeah, I mean I, I mean maybe, you know, like the comic book movies kind of but in terms of like American comic books, but uh as far as movies go, that's I don't know, I'm not sure cuz like what is like a an American movie <laughs> like right well, right yeah I, I i struggle to think of that as something that really drew everyone together i maybe like like oh, gosh maybe like mickey mouse or something i don't know maybe i mean maybe i don't know it's like I, I feel like a lot of people like mickey mouse but have never seen a mickey mouse cartoon <laughs> like they like mickey mouse because he looks cute on a shirt you know yeah, like the Steamboat Willie stuff, uh, less so the later things. <laughs> but, oh, you lo you love Steamboat Willie. Yeah? You're like, oh, yeah, I love the 1920 Steamboat well, Willie. Well, I do love that animation <laughs> style. I love, like, the old Betty that, like, like, where like everything Robert bounces Band. around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's kind of animation. Dancing. Like. <laughs> Those are great. And Cap Cowley dancing as a weird mountain man or a ghost. You know, that, that stuff's great. <laughs> Why is that we don't have that? We don't have anything like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, it's kind of... the fucking Goonies. I feel like like people uh take like 80s cinema. Yeah, definitely and, like, 80s. Why? Why is uh, 80s such a touchstone? That's a good question cuz like basically I mean you got like 50s Hollywood films which are very slow and kind of boring and very similar and then you kind of get in the Rooting. 60s where the cinema really kind of exploded more and Stanley Kubrick and 2001 and really showing what movies could do. <laughs> Um, and then the seventies got more experimental and then I guess the eighties is kind of where everything kind of settled in and, and just crazy fucking insane action movies and everybody's got a home video camera and Hey, let's make a movie. <laughs> yeah. Do you think me, I guess like, cause they say star Wars is like the modern blockbuster. Yeah, I mean, right? yeah, I guess star Wars would kind of maybe be the thing, but it's so international. I don't know, but it's definitely, you know, set like late seventies, early eighties. Yeah, like you know what I maybe westerns. Yeah, definitely westerns for a while for sure. Yeah, I can I can think of a sh of a Shin uh, America Heroes universe <laughs> of like John Wayne, uh, fucking Mickey Mouse, Bugs Bunny, <laughs> uh, the the guy from the Goonies. <laughs> You know, the guy. <laughs> yeah, you know the guy. Whatever. Like, I've never seen the Goonies, all right? Uh, I admit it. <laughs> I, I'm one I, of the people that I don't really care for that movie that much. <laughs> I don't, I, you know, a lot of the 80s stuff I don't really care about, mostly because I wasn't born, but even the stuff I did watch as an adult or as a kid growing up, I'm just like, whatever. It's not really, it's not really my childhood. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the classic films are, there's some that I like, but I, I don't know. I've gotten more into uh, finding the most obscure, shitty 80s movie I can and usually enjoying those. So I don't know. <laughs> Hard to say. Well, sometimes you find your way to good stuff, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, mean I, I've definitely found some good stuff. <laughs> I uh been on the shitty Japanese uh, anime, uh, Japanese <laughs> anime. That's a little redundant. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I've been watching shitty anime, and then sometimes you come across a hentai direct uh, that uh, key animation was done by uh, you know, your favorite uh, 
favorite director or writer <laughs> yeah i mean it's kind of like like Otto started out doing that now he's doing his own thing and meanwhile the creator of ghost in the shell started doing like ghost in the shell and at, like all that other stuff and now now he just makes creepy like western themed hentai uh <laughs> that's like all he does now yeah <laughs> wow it's bizarre i think it's like wild wet west or something and it's you know all weirdly proportioned super tan women with giant breasts huh Interesting stuff. I'll write that down and check it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, would you recommend Shin Godzilla Ooh. to someone who maybe doesn't care about Godzilla, or just a casual fan? Like, or as an introduction to Godzilla, even. Mm. I mean, maybe? I would say, like, I mean, I can only really compare it to the original film and the three American films that I have seen. So in general, I don't know. I'd say this one, as far as like a Godzilla movie, yeah, I mean, it's probably the way to go. I would have to assume because the original definitely is a little like, I, I like the beginning of the original film and then the ending kind of falls apart. Whereas this one, I kind of like the ending more than the beginning, but it's kind of got enough going on where I don't know, it, it probably recommended if like somebody was you know gonna get into godzilla yeah i don't know i feel like if um because i think that even if you've never seen God godzilla has been around so long even if you've never seen a movie you probably can expect okay building the, like destruction and lasers and screaming um and if that's your idea of godzilla you might walk away from shin godzilla disappointed but otherwise i feel like i would recommend this one because I, I think it's funny i think it's clever <laughs> um it's uh yeah i feel like it's clever it feels like a really good uh update for the movie and I, I i mean as far as i understand there hasn't been a movie like this in the godzilla franchise a lot of the godzillas um are like well some of them are, are, are kind of like wacky yeah, <laughs> but um, even the more serious ones are like Godzilla ends up like fighting something else, really. Yeah, and it's sort of like the humans are kind of like in between a battle of 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 wits between a monster and another monster. Yeah, the only one I've seen like little bits of is like I think it was like uh, the Mothra one. There's like these tiny like moth women or something. I don't know what was going on in that movie. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't see the rest of it. Definitely seems to get weirder. And how does this compare then to uh, the American? We didn't even touch on that many. I mean, we mentioned the Matthew Broderick one, but <laughs> the Godzilla. I I'm not a hater. I do like the 2014 Godzilla, the Gareth Edwards one. Mm. I like that, but I also maybe I don't. I don't know because I I I remember watching in the theater. Uh, uh, high, <laughs> and I was and I was like really impressed by the scream. I just mm. remember the scream, so I don't really remember the movie, <laughs> but, yeah, but I, I remember enjoying it. I do. I remember it was like it was fine. Uh, like my roommate made me watch it, and I knew Brian Cranston was in it, so I was like, "Oh, that'll yeah. be fun." And then he died pretty quick, and then main character is some guy, and I didn't really like care for that guy at all but like the movie overall wasn't bad from what i remember but i i barely remember most of what even happened yeah i i i, I remember the guy the gi guy was aaron taylor johnson yeah i remember him because he's quicksilver <laughs> uh <laughs> and he he uh i think elizabeth olsen was his wife in that uh, i think so yeah and i remember brian cranston being in the market and dying like immediately and it was yeah. weird because he was also <laughs> he was also in the power rangers movie that came out maybe like a, a, a in that in that vicinity maybe like a year after or something and also kind of like very bit role um, but they really pushed him. He was hot off of the uh, Breaking Bad. Thing, yeah, they were yeah. just using him for marketing and everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I um, I like I like Shin Godzilla better than that too because I haven't seen the Kong um matchup. But I because I kind of oh, I, I'm, I, I have no interest in whatever they're doing with that. Yeah, I did I did see that that Kong movie with Samuel L. Jackson and uh, whoever. Oh the fuck. yes, uh, that movie I did like that movie. It was like it I had some stupid me. parts. I hated but... that movie. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it has a lot of. We're really, we're really on opposite sides of the monster <laughs> movie spectrum. Yeah, that, I'm I, looking I, for. I, was say I really don't like that movie. I'm looking for the more over the top and cheesy it is, the more I like it. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think Shin Godzilla is too serious is my problem. <laughs> it's like, I can't, I can't take any of this seriously. Everybody's being too serious. <laughs> Everyone's being too serious about this giant monster with googly eyes. Yes. <laughs> no, I, I, um, yeah, I, uh, fuck, I did not like that movie. But I also, like, I thought it was, I, some of the cheesy parts were too cheesy. Because I, I could appreciate a, a silly movie. But the Kong movie, I felt, was totally so different than the 2014 Godzilla, yeah. at least from what I remember from it. I was kind of like, what? But I haven't seen the, the matchup, the, like, Kong versus Godzilla movie. I haven't seen that. Yeah, I don't. I think I watched it. I don't. I don't remember. <laughs> like, I will say Shin Godzilla, of all the movies that we're talking about, it is the most memorable one, because even though there's little happening it kind of makes things a little simpler it's just like a lot of people talking fast and repeating the same things but like it kind of keeps the information simpler where it's like i can i can remember it a little bit more clearly and as far as like i don't have to go back and remember specific scenes too hard because everything's just in a boardroom somewhere <laughs> yes and then maybe that's it i like i like a simple movie i'm a simple man you know hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think i don't know i usually i tend to go for either so bad it's good crazy 80s over the top stupidity or i'm really into like uh nonsensical like ethereal artsy movies where you just like finish it and you're like what the fuck just happened <laughs> yeah and you started this by um comparing shin godzilla to Ikiru. ikiru yes, yes. Ikiru Kurosawa. <laughs> well i were definitely reminded don't of it don't act <laughs> like you don't love your highbrow black and white film <laughs> i do if it's good that movie is really good it actually the uh the main actor in that film who plays the main character he's like the old uh like guy in the original gojira the like white-haired guy with the mustache um the like crazy scientist yeah the older one uh yeah. like the father guy uh he's he's Ikari. like dr wiley yeah. yeah he's basically <laughs> in the ikari movie which was two years before gojira but it kind of it does that again it's that whole red tape bureaucracy and the yeah. whole movie is basically He's got stomach cancer. He's going to die, but he's going to get that fucking park built no matter what. <laughs> and it's a it's a great movie. Well, I we'll have to check that out sometime. So, well, next time we have to find uh, but I, I'm, I'm very happy to be on the opposing side uh, <laughs> because uh, I'll fight for Shin Godzilla. I really like this movie. Yeah, I think and, uh, and a lot of other people do. A lot of people agree with me. It's 86 percent of Rotten Tomatoes. It mostly seems to be positive. really critically acclaimed and everybody seems to really like it. I found a few people here and there. They're like, this movie's boring, um, which I mean, I do agree. I was bored, but overall as a movie like. I don't know. I didn't hate it. It's just not the kind of like I'm I'm kind of glad I watched it, but I have no desire to rewatch it. Nuts. <laughs> Maybe a fan edit. I'll just cut out a little bit of the talking. Hey, you gotta have you're gonna have to fan edit that yourself because I wanna know how much talking can be removed without oh, not without, challenge. Without, <laughs> without without so much plot like you lose so much plot yeah i mean there there's some things like a lot of it is important uh other than just like some repetitious stuff but a lot of that goes to the main story so i don't know if you could cut some things but i mean maybe i could cut out the scene where they have to google his name and figure out what it means but like, <laughs> other than that <laughs> oh, trust the internet <laughs> Well, that's all I got about Shin Godzilla Zero. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that I really have much more to say with it because it, like, it was pretty simple. Movie. I think you should watch it. Maybe we'll come back. I mean, it'd be fun to watch some of the other older Godzilla because I feel like some of the other Godzillas veer into the crazy town that you're into. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely from the clips I've seen, those look more fun. Uh, probably yeah. into that. I, I like the rubber suit and guy just knocking over models. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so we'll have to find a new movie to uh, disagree on but yeah this is fun i like this <laughs> yeah we should definitely do more let's do it again <laughs>